Preventive medicine has had a big push in recent years. We have a wide variety of medicines and treatments for various diseases, but everyone realizes that it's better to just stay healthy in the first place. The same goes with marital conflict. The first priority should be do what you can to prevent conflict from ever occurring. Now you're going to fight sometimes, okay, so don't get too happy, but let's do what we can do to minimize the seriousness and frequency of them. The key to this is to create a space where conflict doesn't grow. In this space, you automatically feel good about your partner. You're confident of their love for you, even if they don't show it at the time. You know they mean well, even if it didn't come out right. And even when they fail at something, you feel you think the best of them. When you're truly dedicated to each other, when you truly love, value, and respect one another, it's easier to overlook the minor annoyances that happen throughout the day. So how do you develop this atmosphere? Five things. Number one, show up for the marriage. Find time to be together and, and do something where you have to interact. Okay, this should be outside of taking the kids to practice or anything else um, similar to that. Your body and mind should be in the same room and focused on one another. Number two, talk about other things. Uh, when you're together, talk about something else besides the errands and the budget. Talk about politics without asking when you're going to go register to vote. Talk about God without talking about next week's activity that you have to plan. This is an effort to get to know your spouse better because you'll never, um, there's, you can never know too much about your spouse. Now this strategy and the previous one are both an effort to build closeness. The closer you are to someone and the more you trust them, you automatically interpret the things that they do positively. You know that when they snap at you, it's, not be, it's because that they're stressed. And they aren't stressed all the time, so you don't get mad. Number three, encourage and praise. So here's the deal. In general, when women don't hear any praise, they assume that there's something wrong with what they did. Men, on the other hand, take, take the opposite approach. For men, the absence of criticism is a sign of approval. So again, this is just a general rule. And however your spouse is, it doesn't hurt to give a little praise every now and then. And really, the more praise and encouragement that you give, the less conflict you will have in general in your marriage. Number four, be grateful. Express gratitude by words and by actions. As God says in chapter 32, He said, work, people of David, thankfulness. So say it and show it. The consistent expression of gratitude has an effect on the receiver and that they feel better about the relationship and they want to express their gratitude as well. It has an effect on the giver in that when you're always grateful, you become a more positive person which will help you in your marriage and in your life. The fifth and final point, let things go. 90% of the things that bother you should be let go. Reserve the other 10% of things for serious discussion. Even of the 10%, there shouldn't be, there shouldn't be huge blow-ups where you scream and hurl insults at each other. Always ask yourself, is this really a big deal? Should I get mad over this? Will this matter two years from now? If the answer is no to one or more of those things, you should probably just leave it. So that last one is really a culmination of the rest of the strategies. It will be easier to let things go when you spend more time with your spouse and just have conversations about life in general. When you praise your spouse, when you're great, and when you're grateful, things will automatically start to roll off your shoulders. Brother Q, signing off. Assalamu alaikum.